right, thank you, Dr. Ayler. Um, so tonight, we'll, our main objectives are going to be to discuss the major mosquito-borne illnesses, um, to familiarize ourselves with the geographic distribution of these um, infections, as well as understand the life cycle of mosquitoes. So first of all, ma malaria. Um, the name malaria itself was initially um, derived at, uh, from mal, which means bad, and area, which is air. And it was because um, initially they thought that breathing bad air was what caused malaria, uh, was what caused the malaria infections, um, whether it be from swamps or you know any type of water sources nearby. Um, malaria itself is endemic to Sub-Saharan Africa, Southeast Asia. The vector is the Anopheles mosquito, and the in incubation period can range anywhere between 7 to 30 days. Um, symptoms include fevers, rigors, flu-like illness, malaise, and these symptoms basically start when the virus, um, sorry, the, um, the parasite develops inside the red blood cell and the red blood cell kind of explodes in the blood and releases these um, two major uh, proteins, hemozoin and glucose phosphate isomerase, causing a cytokine storm type picture and the fevers. So this is the kind of the global distribution of uh, malaria and the different colors represent the different type of mosquitoes that are endemic to that area. So there are five types of plasmodium that we know cause illness. Um, Falciparum, vivax, ovale, malaria, and nolesii. Um, Falciparum and nolesii usually have symptoms kind of inconsistently, um, whereas vivax and ovale have symptoms every uh, 48 hours or known as tertian malaria. Uh, and malaria has um, symptoms every 72 hours or quartian uh, malaria. Uh, Felciparum and, and nolesii have a rapid turnover, so they, um, they rapidly divide and, and hence they, they're more likely to pr produce symptoms quickly. In terms of um, I guess in, oh, okay, sorry. in terms of unique um, stages, of malaria, uh, the falciparum um, can go to the brain, um, whereas the vivax and ovale can go have a liver, dormant liver form um, two to four years, uh, respectively. And the malaria and um, nolesii uh, ha both have similar features on peripheral smear. In terms of treatment, um, for falciparum, you want to use dual therapy. Uh, for Vivax and Ovale, you want to use primaquin-based therapy because those affect the liver forms, um, whereas uh, malaria and nolestii, as you can see there, chloroquine or primaquin can be used. Um, in terms of the per peripheral smear with falciparum, you see ring forms. Um, with the Vivax and Ovale, you see the Schuffner dots. Um, and in the malaria and nolestii forms, you see the band. So in terms of the actual life cycle um, of plasmodium, uh, first it, it, um, it occurs in, a, I guess, the, um, a mosquito that uh, feeds on, on an infected human, um, then develops in the mosquito's uh, stomach, and then when the mosquito feeds on another human, it injects the sporozoites into the human. Um, which develop in the liver, uh, then in, th in the bloodstream, and can uh, ca cause infection in that host human, as well as uh, allow for potential spread um, via another um, mosquito bite. So diagnosis is mainly by peripheral smear. There can be uncomplicated and severe forms of malaria. Um, the severe forms uh, involve basically multi-organ failure, low glucose, high lactate, um, neurologic symptoms, and hyperparasitemia. Um, some protective factors in these endemic regions are if a patient has sickle cell trait or thalassemia trait or have a G6PD deficiency, they basically have uh, um, less uh, um, 
the RBCs linger for less period of time in the bloodstream, so the um, plasmodium doesn't have a chance to replicate as effectively as it would in a, um, a host that does not have these traits. And this is just another pictogram with comparing all the different types of stages of the plasmodium uh, and, uh, in the red blood cell. And this, is, this shows uh, the plasmodium for, for some for falciparum ring forms within the red blood cells. And then um, you should always keep in mind that there is some resistance to some of the therapies that we have. And the dark green basically shows the chloroquine resistant areas, and the light green shows the chloroquine sensitive areas. Um, there is a malaria vaccine that has is that has been um, in the works um, in the phase one trial, and based, I think in August of 2013, um, there were 57 patients that were in the study, um, four that received the vaccine, and four that received a, or, or, sorry, 40 that received the vaccine, and 17 that received the placebo. And they basically received a low dose or a high dose um, of the medication. And this was an IV-based therapy, which is different from the normal vaccines that we have um, available to us currently. So that is one drawback of this, um, which they're working on. But they noticed that uh, patients that received a higher dose um, uh, fared, uh, fared better than those with the lower dose, and obviously the placebo. Um, so that's one thing to look for. So next is dengue. Um, it's a flavivirus. There are four types, um, and you can basically get reinfected, get infected four times if you if they're if you're so lucky to get each of the four different types. Um, so the vector is basically the Aedes aegypti mosquito. It's found in urban and suburban um, subtropics. The symptoms include fever, headache, body aches, and hemorrhage. Um, you can see leukopenia on um, their CBC. Um, diagnosis is usually by PCR. You can also do tourniquet testing. Basically, um, you'll see the blood vessels kind of explode and cause um, erythema on the skin, so that's a positive sign for um, dengue. Uh, treatment is basically supportive, and there's also a vaccine that's in the works that uh, shows has been shown uh, some promise uh, in South America. So next is uh, chikungunya. Uh, it's a toga virus. Um, it's again distributed by the Aedes aegypti and Aedes albopticus uh, mosquitoes, uh, found in the subtropics. And in this case, uh, they'll Patients are more likely to get joint pains um, and a maculopapular rash, distinguishing it from dengue. And um, on CBC, you're more likely to see lymphopenia. Um, diagnosis is early on can be done by viral culture. Um, within like five to seven days, you can also do reverse transcriptase PCR. And then as the patient has, has had symptoms for longer, you can start thinking about serology. Um, treatment again is supportive, and uh, long-term complications most commonly is the polyarthralgias. This is the um, current distribution of chikungunya in, in the United States. Okay, so on to yellow fever. It's also flav flavivirus, Aedes aegypti again, is the culprit um, found in South America and Africa. Um, causes fevers, chills, back pain um, initially, and if and patients can also develop a second phase, which includes the jaundice and hemorrhagic components. Uh, diagnosis is primarily clinical, but you can also use PCR, and um, there is a vaccine available to, for prevention. So patients that are, or I guess, yeah, there would be patients, um, patients that are going to these endemic areas would um, benefit from getting a vaccine at least a month before they travel to that area um, if they're planning to stay at least a month or more. So. Um, next is West Nile virus. Um, it's also a flavivirus. Um, there's bird to human transmission. Um, this time it's the Culex mosquito that is uh, the uh, predominant vector. Um, there's a seasonal component to this um, disease summer to 
um, the first frost, so basically June to September in most, uh, most areas. Uh, 70, to 80, 70 to 80 percent of patients are asymptomatic um, and less than one percent actually get the neurologic symptoms. Um, if they do get these neuro symptoms and you're highly suspicious, you want to get the IgM um, in the CSF and the CSF will also, also show elevated protein and lymphocyte <coughs> predominance. So um, last group of, or second to last group of diseases would be the encephalitis. Um, of these, the first was Western equine encephalitis. And basically, um, the, the re geographic region is west of the Mississippi River. Uh, it was first uh, discovered in 1930 in a horse in California. Transmission is bir from birds to humans, and it's the Culex mosquito that is in, uh, involved in spreading. Um, and there's predominantly flu-like illnesses. Um, there isn't a vaccine for humans, but there is a vaccine for horses. Next would be the St. Louis encephalitis. Um, it's found throughout the United States um, and the Gulf Coast. Um, the last epidemic here in our state was in 1990. Um, again, bird to human transmission, Culex mosquito, uh, flu-like illness. Um, in the CSF, you see a lymphocyte predominance with elevated protein in um, 30 to 50 percent of the cases and you want to get the IgM in the serum or the CSF for diagnosis. Um, next is the La Crosse virus. Uh, it was first des described in La Crosse, Wisconsin, um, more found east of the Mississippi River and, and Appala Appalachia, um, and this is spread by a uh, woodland Aedes mosquito. And in this case, it would be more neutrophil that you would see in the CSF, and in, on EEG, it will mimic more HSV um, type infection. So the more, the most serious of these encephalitis are the, uh, the Eastern equine encephalitis. Um, it's found in the Eastern Americas, so basically the Eastern coast of the United States, um, Caribbean, Central America, and South America. Um, it's found in freshwater, hardwood swampland. Um, okay, and it can be transmitted to humans and horses. Um, and similar to the others in, in terms of the CSF, and there's a 50% mortality with this, case, with this uh, infection. And there's also a vaccine for horses in this case. So the last one is the Japanese encephalitis. Um, it's found in Southern and Eastern Asia. Um, transmissions from birds to humans and pigs. Um, and most patients that get this illness recover pretty asymptomatically. Um, only 1% actually manifest uh, severe symptoms, and there's a 20 to 30% mortality in this case. Um, there's also a vaccine to prevent uh, this infection. So again, if you're going to an, an endemic area, uh, staying for more than one month at a time, um, you, you really want to consider this, getting this vaccine. Um, and you want to avoid the dusk and dawn periods of when this type of mosquito likes to feed. So just regionally distribution, so western equine encephalitis is west of the Mississippi. So St. Louis encephalitis is pretty much throughout, more concentrated in the southern state, Texas and Florida. This is the uh, lacrosse virus uh, east of the Mississippi. Again, east of the Mississippi, and Japanese encephalitis in Southeast Asia. So um, filariasis can also be distributed by mosquitoes, um, especially the lymphatic filariasis, and those are Wuchereria, Bancrofti, and Brugia. Um, and the vectors here, there are multiple, Aedes, Anopheles, and Culex, basically everything that we talked about already. Um, diagno diagnosis is basically done by peripheral smear, and you want to look at it. Uh, you want to get the blood sample at night because that's when the filaria actually uh, emerge into the bloodstream. Um, treatment would be with um, DEC, albendazole, and ivermectin, and uh, you can prevent um, this and all the other mosquito infections by eradication and use, use of bed nets. So a little bit about our vectors that cause these illnesses. So mosquito basically stands for little fly. There are more than 3,500 species, and not all mosquitoes feed on blood. 
Um, if they do feed on blood, it's usually the females of the species that feeds on the blood. They can transmit both viral and parasitic illnesses like we talked about. And the life cycle ranges anywhere between f from 5 to 40 days. Depending on the climate uh, and the, se the season, um, which allows uh, easier uh, growth for the for the mosquitoes. So, to so the life cycle, basically, the mosquito lays an egg in a kind of like a raft type format, as you can see in the um, top left picture, that develops into a larva in the pupa stage. Um, in the larva stage is when they're feeding actively. Um, that's what you can see hanging down here. And then the pupa stage is when they're pretty dormant. Um, they just stick to the surface of water and until, unless there's some, they, feed, they see some type of threat, um, like a shadow, moving shadow, then they'll like move further down into the water. Um, and then they emerge uh, in, in the adult form. So the three types of mosquitoes that we talked about, the Aedes, Anopheles, and Culex, um, you can see the diseases that they cause there. Um, the Aedes likes to nest more in the mud and uh, water's edge, so not directly in the water. So that differentiates them between the Anopheles and the Culex. And um, also and another difference is the Anopheles, when it feeds, it feeds more in, at an angle, as you can see in the middle picture whereas the others are a little bit more at an acute um, angle. So, and basically prevention um, of any of these illnesses can be with mosquito net, use of mosquito nets, uh, repellents. Um, there's also a, a kite patch, is basically like a tag that you can wear on your, on your clothing that has some of these medications um, to repel these mosquitoes. Educate your patients on um, how to protect themselves and how to prevent um, mosquito breeding through you know, frequent removal of stagnant water. And there's also a resource called ArboNet developed by the CV CDC that keeps track of um, mosquito outbreaks in, uh, in, in the U.S. So um, that's another resource. And that's it.